Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lefakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 8th of October. Indian Air Force celebrates its 87th anniversary. Residents of Pakistan's Karachi continue to suffer due to water crisis. And women in India smear each other with vermilion as Hindu festival ends. And now for all the details, the Indian Air Force on Tuesday celebrated its 87th anniversary with traditional grand parade and scintillating air display by various aircraft. Tri-Services chiefs also paid floral tributes at the National War Memorial in the capital, New Delhi. The Indian Air Force on Tuesday celebrated its 87th anniversary with traditional grand parade and scintillating air display by various aircraft. Chief of Indian Air Force, Army and Navy paid floral tributes at the National War Memorial in capital New Delhi on the occasion of Indian Air Force Day. Air Force Chief, Air Chief Marshal Rakesh Singh Badoria later inspected the Guard of Honor at the Hindon Air Force Station in northern Ghaziabad. It was followed by air display by the Air Force warriors. The Indian Air Force showcased its Chinook transport and Apache attack helicopters for the first time since they were acquired from the US in the last few months. Indian Air Force is on the path of rapid modernization through acquisition of crucial technologies and critical capabilities such as the Rafale fighter aircraft, S-400 surface -to air missile systems, precision weapons, advanced electronics, and early warning systems to name a few. India observes the Air Force Day every year on October 8th. Indian Air Force was established on October 8, 1932 as an auxiliary of the Royal British Air Force. The Indian Air Force safeguards the Indian Territory and has been pivotal in providing help during national calamities in the country. Pakistan once again violated ceasefire and continued firing on Indian positions along the border in Punch district of India's Jammu and Kashmir, residents claimed on Monday. Pakistan has violated ceasefire nearly 7,000 times in the last seven years. Residents claimed on Monday that Pakistan violated ceasefire and fired on Indian positions along the de facto border line of control or LOC in Punch district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. Civilian areas were also targeted by Pakistan in the firing, following which people were forced to stay inside their houses. Pakistan has made nearly 7,000 ceasefire violations in Jammu and Kashmir along the line of control and international border in the last seven years. Panic-struck residents of the area said they were finding places to hide. अभी तक पाकिस्तान जो है युद्ध विराम का उल्लंघन कर रहा है और हैवी मोटर शेलिंग कर रहा है जिससे लोगों में डर सा बना हुआ है और अभी तक भी देखो पाकिस्तान की तरफ से फायर चल रहा है बहुत हैवी फायरिंग चल रही है मोर्टार भी कर रहे हैं पाकिस्तान की तरफ से चल रही है और हमारे लोग यहां पे बहुत घबराए हैं हम भी बहुत घबराए हुए हैं और अपने छुपने की जगह ढूंढ रहे हैं कि कहां छुपा जाए Earlier, Jammu and Kashmir's Director General of Police Dilbagh Singh has said that Pakistan attempts to push a number of infiltrators during ceasefire violations. Relations between India and Pakistan, already hostile, have been further strained over India's decision in August to revoke the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. And news just in, at least 20 students were wounded by a blast inside a university in Afghanistan's Ghazni city on Tuesday morning, local media reports said. The explosion occurred while a lecture was in session. The students were immediately admitted to hospital. No group has claimed responsibility for the attack so far. And meanwhile, at least 10 people were killed in a suicide attack in Afghanistan's Jalalabad city on Monday. Around 27 people were injured in the attack which targeted a minibus carrying a security recruits. At least 10 people were killed and 27 were wounded after a suicide bomb targeted a minibus of recruits for the Afghan forces. 
in Jalalabad, city of Afghanistan's eastern Nangarhar province on Monday. According to an official, the bomb was detonated in a rickshaw-like vehicle. The casualties in the incident included recruits, civilians and a child, reports said. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for Monday's attack, but Jalalabad city witnesses frequent terror attacks by both the Taliban and the Islamic State. The attack on the security forces comes after U.S. talks with the Taliban to withdraw troops and end the 18-year Afghan war were halted last month by U.S. President Donald Trump. Residents in Pakistan's parts to Karachi city continue to suffer due to water crisis and rely on water tankers for their daily cause. Members of Water Tanker Association recently held a press conference where they informed that they will move high court against water mafias and illegal hydrants operating in the region. The Water Tanker Association in Pakistan's port city Karachi recently held a press conference on water crisis and highlighted the plight of the residents due to it. Karachi residents continue to suffer due to water crisis and rely on water tankers for their daily course. Managing Director of Water Tanker Association Irfan Ullah Murwat said that while some of the distribution is legal, much is carried out by the so-called tanker mafia who get their own water through boreholes, illegal water hydrants or even by tapping into the mains to steal and sell water. Murwet said that illegal hydrants built in the line is leading to water scarcity and that authorities including ministers were involved in the activity. Mujhe time batai main aapko apni gaadi mein leke chalta hu ek round lagwa ke dikhata hu ki kis tarike se hydrant banaye gaye hain kis tarike se hydrant jo Karachi ki main line aa rahi hai usko puncture karke usme se hydrant banaye gaye hain ek nahi do do मिनिस्टर साहिबान के कहने पे किस तरीके से लोगों ने घरों के बाहर पंप लगा के और मेरे जी हलके में छह हाइड्रेंट इस वक्त चल रहे छह इलीगल हाइड्रेंट और उसी इलाके के लोग जो हैं वो पानी खरीद के पीते Murwet said that members of Water Tanker Association will file a case against water mafias and within a week will move high court and file a writ petition against the Sindh government and the concerned officials. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan Finance Minister Mangala Samarvira has claimed that since 2016, all the money the government borrowed was to repay the loans of the previous government of former President Mahinda Raj Paksa. Sri Lanka's Finance Minister Mangala Samara Veera has said all the money the current government has borrowed since 2016 was to repay the loans of the previous government of former President Mahinda Rajpaksa. The Finance Minister made the remarks while responding to opposition leader Mahinda Rajpaksa's recent claim that the incumbent government borrowed a staggering 26 billion US dollars to retain power and not to build anything of lasting values. Samara Vira said Rajpaksa had borrowed more foreign loans at higher interest rates than any previous government and left the country in a debt trap. He said because of all the Rajpaksa debt, interest payments are 31% shares of government spending. The finance minister's remarks come as the island nation is set to hold presidential poll on November 16. Mahinda Rajpaksa, Sri Lanka People's Front has fielded his brothers Gotabaya Rajpaksa and Chamal Rajpaksa to contest against ruling United National Front's deputy leader Sajid Premadasa. With an aim to create self-employment opportunities for prisoners, authorities at the central prison in South India have set up a freedom salon run entirely by its inmates. The salon, which is receiving good response from the public, not only offers haircuts but also provides services like ironing on clothes. Authorities at the central prison in India's southern Coimbatore city have set up a freedom salon in order to create self-employment for the prisoners. The salon run entirely by the inmates not only offers haircuts but also ironing of clothes. The initiative is receiving a good response from public as well as from the prisoners who are working with great enthusiasm. This is the 
அவங்களுக்கு ஒரு வேலை கொடுத்த மாதிரி இருக்குது நம்மளுக்கு ஒரு கம்ஃபர்டபுளாக இருக்குது சேவிங் நமக்கு வந்து வெளியில் வந்து நூறுரூவா வச்சு இங்கே ஐம்பது ரூபா ஐம்பது ரூபா நமக்கு சேவ் ஆகுது இல்லை அப்படிங்கிறவங்க Authorities at the central prison had earlier also introduced a retail store called Prison Bazaar where various bakery products, handloom textiles, oil, soaps among other things made by the prisoners were sold. Hundreds of youths have already applied for ongoing registration to fill various posts in police and the army in India's Jammu and Kashmir later this month. The candidates have appreciated the efforts by the authorities to provide them employment opportunities and serve the nation. Scores of youths are registering themselves for police and army recruitment drives to be held later this month in Samba district of India's Jammu and Kashmir. A senior official said that recruitment is being done for two battalions of Jammu and Kashmir police that will be exclusively for women and another two battalions for men from the border districts. More than 200 youths who are presently undergoing physical training to prepare themselves for the recruitment drive appreciated the efforts of the authorities in providing a platform for employment opportunities in the region. यहाँ पे अभी जैसे हमें पता लगा कि तीन चार भर्तियाँ हैं आर्मी की है पुलिस की है दिल्ली पुलिस की भी आज नोटिफिकेशन निकली हुई है तो जो आर्मी की है वो सांबा में ही है तो हमारे यहाँ पे इस ग्राउंड में दो तीन महीने पहले से ही प्रैक्टिस जो हमने शुरू कर दी थी तो हमारे यहाँ जैसे ही रिटायर्ड कैप्टन राज सिंह जी जो हमें प्रैक्टिस कराते हैं सुबह शाम को तो हमें बहुत खुशी है कि यहाँ आइए हमें देशभक्ति करने का मौका मिलेगा एम्प्लॉयमेंट तो एक बहुत बड़ा पुल फैक्टर होता है और यूथ में बहुत बड़ा जोश भी है काफ़ी संख्या में जो है बच्चे जो हैं फॉर्म भर रहे हैं द सीनियर ऑफिशियल सेड Around 70 special police officers or SPOs will also be recruited in Jammu and Kashmir police. Till now more than 600 male and 450 female candidates have already submitted their applications for various posts. Devotees in parts of India bid farewell to Hindu goddess Durga on Tuesday on the last day of the Durga Puja festival. Women on the auspicious day made religious offerings to Durga idols and smeared each other's faces with vermilion as part of a tradition. Devotees in parts of India on Tuesday bid adieu to Hindu goddess Durga on the occasion of Vijay Dashmi, the last of the four days of ritual worship of the deity. Women at a marquee in New Delhi's Chitranjan Park played Sindur Khela or Vermilion Ceremony, a Bengali Hindu tradition where women smear Goddess Durga's idol and each other with vermilion. It is believed that women get a long married life if they have more amount of vermilion on their face. Today is the last day of the Pujo and uh, the Goddess is going to be bid farewell with uh, Sindur Khela. and uh, this is very i'm very excited i'm a punjabi but i have come all the way for this to play it's my first time and i am really really ecstatic to ye jo vijayadashmi hoti hai is din hum bahut zyada excited hote hain kyunki ek sindur khelna jo hota hai ye ek bengali tradition hai jo matlab isme aisa koi rules nahi hai ki sirf married log hi khel sakte hain sabhi khel sakte hain chahe ladke ho ya ladkiyan ho Similar scenes were witnessed in eastern Kolkata city where women queued up at markets to bid farewell to the goddess and offered vermilion to her. Durga Puja marks the victory of Durga over the evil buffalo demon king Mahishasur. It is believed that during the festival the goddess descends on earth to rid it of demons and bless her devotees with happiness and prosperity. Vijay Dashmi celebrations conclude with processions to water bodies that carry idols of Goddess Durga accompanied by music and chants after which the idols are immersed into water for dissolution. Well that's the way it was in South Asia this evening before we conclude the top stories once again. Indian Air Force celebrates its 87th anniversary. Residents of Pakistan's Karachi continue to suffer due to water prices. And women in India smear each other with vermilion as Hindu festival ends. Now our viewers can watch the show on sadeshanewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sadeshanewsline and follow us on Twitter at sadeshanewsline. That's all in today's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.